In today's video, Jake Paul made headlines yet again. A recent video of John Jones leg kicking a fan at their request has gone viral, sparking mixed reactions from the MMA community. Many fans express concerns regarding Jones's physical condition and fighting priorities. Sweat equity. Yeah, today is a ton of sweat. <laughs> Also in this video, Umar Nurmagomedov, the cousin of UFC legend Habib Nurmagomedov, has finally returned to the octagon. While he secured a dominant victory against Bekzat Almakan, his performance has sparked debate among fans and analysts. <laughs> So, without further ado, let's get started. Ah! Yeah, I did that way. Okay, and action. Great. Cut. Okay. I think that's it, John, right? Okay. Uh, wait, do you want to just have him walk up these stairs? Just, sure. He has to walk up. Okay, ready, rolling, and action. Cool. Great. Cut. All right. That's it. Now, recently, John Jones has participated in the concerning new trend of MMA fighters delivering leg kicks to fans upon request. The leg kicking incident might seem trivial, but it has ignited a broader discussion about Jones's future in the octagon. The clip shows Jones appearing heavier than usual, fulfilling a young fan's request for a leg kick. The fan, seemingly unfazed by the first kick's impact, even asked for a harder one which Jones playfully delivers. However, online commentary took a different tone. Some fans pointed to Jones's physique, suggesting it indicates a lack of training due to his recent surgery. One fan wrote, why does John Jones look so goofy when he kicks? The skepticism was fueled by a comment claiming the light heavyweight contender Magomed Ankalaev would crush Jones, raising doubts about his ability to compete at heavyweight. Others criticized Jones for seemingly prioritizing non-fighting activities over a potential bout with interim heavyweight champion Tom Aspinall. Common Sense wrote, this is what Jones is doing instead of fighting Aspinall. <laughs> Tom Aspinall himself also commented on John Jones's fat physique. He doesn't look in good shape, Aspinall posted. Now, Aspinall, well aware of the physical transformations a heavyweight like himself can undergo during periods of inactivity, acknowledged that appearances can be deceiving. He pointed out that the heavier frame might simply be Jones's natural state outside a training camp and doesn't necessarily reflect his fighting capabilities. The underlying subtext of Aspinall's comments is clear, a burning desire to face Jones in the octagon. He admits to not knowing Jones personally, but expresses his hope that Jones keeps going so they can eventually clash for the undisputed heavyweight championship. With Jones' return shrouded in uncertainty and Aspinall eager to prove his mettle, the MMA world eagerly awaits the next chapter in this heavyweight saga. Will Jones regain his fighting form? Or will Aspinall emerge as the new king of the heavyweight jungle? Only time will tell. If you want to become a hater out of that, you go right ahead. But that's the ammunition that you have to use. And the oldest one in the book is to take a stud, big hoss like John, and then say he's scared. Go ahead and do it. But now you're outside of the code because you're not accurate. John Jones is not scared. And John Jones has not turned down 
anybody. But as you recall, Umar burst onto the UFC scene with a series of impressive victories. However, injuries and illnesses sidelined him for over a year, raising some concerns about his consistency. But nonetheless, Nurmagomedov finally made his return to the octagon. The opponent selected for him wasn't the most seasoned. Bekzat from Kazakhstan was a good fighter, but had yet to establish himself in the UFC, despite having a solid record in other promotions. But nevertheless, victory was anticipated from Umar by everyone today. The fight unfolded predictably as the Kazakhstani fighter began the bout with a lot of energy, unleashing a flurry of powerful punches while standing. Within the first minute of the fight, Umar found himself in a precarious position after absorbing a solid blow from the side. Nurmagomedov, however, quickly neutralized the threat by taking the fight to the ground, where his grappling prowess reigned supreme. All three rounds followed a similar pattern, with Nurmagomedov controlling the fight through dominant wrestling and ground control. While a clear victory, the fight lacked any real excitement that many fans crave. But I mean, let's be honest here. MMA fans, they don't like those kinds of fight. The entire fight takes place on the ground. Fans love blood and spectacular knockouts. That's why some fighters reach the title so quickly, because they show the fights that fans want to see. Whether you love or hate Ilya Topuria, that's why he got a shot at the title six fights later. And he proved to everyone that it was not in vain that they gave him such a chance. He shows a lot of crazy fights. Now, I love Umar Nurmagomedov very much, and I've been watching him for a long time. He is a very respectful, generally good guy. But I don't think he's quite yet ready to fight Marab Wallace Wheelie whom his coach Javier Mendez considers the most dangerous opponent in the future for Umar. And it's not for nothing that he sees it that way. I can fight Marab at all levels, anywhere he wants, anywhere he offers. I don't know why Javier Mendez sees such a threat in him. I see no threat in him. I won't let him wrestle. He's not technically good for that striking. He just throws random shots. Uh, yeah, I, 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 like I said, I get what he's trying to say, but Probably it's came out when, wrong. <laughs> when you get in there with him, I, but I think a lot of guys say that about Marab until they get in there with him and then they realize, well, this kid is a lot better than I, I freaking thought. I've been and there. I give him <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> yeah. Jake Paul made headlines yet again. In a bout that lasted less than three minutes, Paul swiftly disposed of his opponent, Ryan Borland, leaving fans and critics alike stunned. Borland, touted as one of Paul's toughest challengers yet with a record of 17-2, seemed unprepared for the onslaught unleashed by Paul. So love him or hate him, there's no denying the intrigue surrounding the enigmatic figure known as the problem child and his meteoric rise in the world of boxing. I can't, I can't do shit. I feel so bad for introducing Jake Paul to box fucked up. This is, I can't allow this to happen. I can't, I can't. He's disrespecting my sport. He's disrespecting everything. I just, I don't know. Call my team, Jake. F you. That's all for today. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel because it is very important to us. And thank you all in advance.